We are also following the latest in Syria, where there is now a standoff over a United Nations official, in fact, says opposition fighters in Syria are not allowing the sick and wounded to leave the besieged city of Aleppo because the Syrian government and Russia are, in fact, preventing medical supplies from entering the city. Meantime, the U.N. human rights chief has called the war in Syria in plain words, a slaughterhouse. He is urging a war crimes investigation. For more than on this situation, I'm joined by our foreign affairs correspondent, Margaret Brennan. Again, Margaret, the leader of the UN Human Rights Council says uh, that what we're seeing and have seen amounts to war crimes. Certainly what we have seen there speaks to a humanitarian crisis of the most strident order. How does this, though, complicate the U.S. position at present? Well, at any other time in U.S. history, you would at least have a debate about whether America needs to intervene on humanitarian grounds. But President Obama staked out this position very early on, saying, I'm not going to take direct action. So what you have here is the United Nations essentially standing up and trying to embarrass yeah. Russia and Assad and his Iranian allies into stopping the, these airstrikes, stopping their attacks on this city where 250,000 civilians, 100,000 of them children, are trapped inside along with rebel fighters that are really dug in. So what you have is Russia coming forward and saying, no, we're not going to stop the war. We are going to continue fighting till we win, but we'll do these temporary pauses. 11 hours, you can leave. And the problem is the U U.S. and Western powers and the Syrian rebels say this is a tactic. This yeah. isn't really peace. You're just trying to use this to regain territory. So you have this uh, war of words and basically uh, 250,000 people with their lives directly on the line. Yeah, hanging in the balance. Is there any reason to believe that shame on the international stage would work here? <laughs> It seems quite shameless yeah. at this point. It's five and a half years, yeah. close to six million people displaced, nearly half a million people killed, and it has not made a difference. You have, uh, however, uh, the international community, the UN, when they directly accuse Russia's Vladimir Putin of war crimes and say, we may even try to take this to the International Criminal Court, Yes, it's rhetoric. It does bother his standing on the international stage. It opens him up to further sanctions. It opens up Iran and Syria as well. The problem is you have to get the rest of the international community to actually follow through. And so far, no one has followed through. And this tactic that the Assad regime has adopted, starve or surrender, if you don't surrender, we're going to just pound you, seems to be working in that they are regaining territory from the rebels. And so as the sick and wounded have not been able to evacuate, uh, the medical supplies are, are, are being blocked. It has inspired perhaps the only piece of agreement we have seen between the two major party candidates for president at this yes. point, the need for safe zones, for, for no fly zones. But even those discussions end up with the zero sum question. If a Russian fighter breached a no-fly zone, would you be willing to shoot it down? It seems, to your point, five and a half, almost six years later, we're still having the same discussion. Well, and I think this is so fascinating because I do believe if this were another time in history, we would be having a very different conversation mm -hmm. about this. We would be talking about it in terms of Sarajevo. We would be talking about this in terms of mass slaughters where the international community said, wait, words aren't enough. We're going to intervene to stop and to push back. And the appetite politically seemingly doesn't seem to be there. That's what the Obama administration would say, that, yes, the United States does fundamentally have a responsibility to protect. We like to say never again will we stand by and allow mass slaughter. But if you are going to allow a bully to do this, sometimes the bully needs to be pushed back and no military French, British, American military is willing to put their soldiers' lives on the line to save these civilians right now. So it, it's, it's an incredible precedent, and it's something that we're going to be continuing to hash out with the next president. It's going to be one of the top national security risks on the agenda for either a Trump or Hillary Clinton presidency, and how they respond is really going to set the tone. Beyond perhaps the legacy of an administration or even a country, a real inflection point in history here, to be sure. Margaret Brennan. Appreciate it.